The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 298, Nasdaq's down 97, S&P's off 32, gold's up by 940, trading at 14.98 an ounce. You get silver up 16 cents, $17.46 46 cents an ounce. Light sweet crude off 29 cents, 53 dollars 32 cents a barrel. We're going to get uh, oil numbers at 10:30. As if you need more volatility, maybe in this market, let's get some oil inventory numbers at 10:30. Why not? Totally. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year note up four. 13025 the 30 year up 6 at 16228 now both of those uh, confirmed abc structures up folks uh, they took out their b point yes they took them out with volume and your price projection is just under the September high. So uh, higher price, lower yield. King dollar, king dollar up 47 ticks trade 99174. King dollar came back inside. Well, it tested its high yesterday, stayed up there for a bit, got back inside it. Euro. Euro is at 109, the yen is at 107 and a half, and the pound is at 122 to 1 US dollar. And we got an ABC down market in the major indices. You get an ABC up market in the bonds. And I got to first go to the small caps because this, you talk about getting taken apart yesterday, man. <laughs> this is like. Uh, it really is, man. You tie in yesterday to today, and I said to you, right, as we were about to come on the show, right? It's almost a matter of S&Ps, we're at basically 2,900. We were almost at 3,000. It's basically 24 hours ago. We got that ISM number at 10 a.m. yesterday. Right. Man, you can't take off 24 hours in this market. You'll miss you'll miss 100 S&P points. You'll miss 1,000 Dow points. And what do we add in the IWM? We were just at 153. We're sitting at 147. Right. 4% almost. And, you know, for those who does, you know, use trends, okay, moving averages, you're going to see destruction here. Okay. Look at this. Every, I mean, this was a break with conviction of the 50, the 100, and the 200 in the exact same day. Yeah. That's pretty intense. You don't see that a lot. Could I just uh, put this on a little bit yep. longer time frame? Yep. I'm just curious, maybe if you back it up uh, where those lines have, have sat. So that's interesting. Now, what is that? The 200? I wonder how that goes. Cause now, that's on the weekly now. Okay. Which is more, more important. That the way this works yeah. is that you get the daily, weekly, the monthly. The, bo the bottom line, it hasn't been able to get over the 50 on the weekly. Okay. And that's a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. That's, that's definitely a problem. The, uh, it's, it's a big number. You know, if we go over to the uh, S&Ps, uh, let's take a look at those S&Ps. You're going to see those S&Ps. We did do... Uh, an ABC structure on the way down. It took out the B point, took it out uh, with volume yesterday. And look at that, man. Oh, my God. Just mammoth, man. I mean, that's what yeah. I said. It's there like, it is. The right numbers there. today are huge, but they're especially huge when you come off a huge day yesterday and no breathing room. It just keeps going. Right. Yeah. And so now, folks, the bottom line is that the, the bottom of the consolidation is game. You know, you, you're into the zone. Once you get into 2945, it's like, okay. It doesn't have to, I don't expect a straight line move to 227.77, but you're in it, man. You're yeah. It. And we had ADP number today, right? Pretty muted response to it. As it I think what did I just said it, it took the update 140,000 yeah it, it took a while for the market to, to come down and what was so strange this morning folks not strange but if you were uh, like 35 I yeah. was looking at the the European markets were absolutely getting smoked and we were only down 10 S&P points this okay. morning and the the FTSE it's 2.6 now. It's about 2.4. I mean, but you were talking about some major, major selling. And that's yeah. unusual that we had that type of major selling and our S&P was still only down 10. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you could know? argue that that was them catching up with yesterday's action for oh, us. For sure. You know what right. I mean? That, that's, right. that's why yeah. uh, they but, hadn't had the chance to kind of accelerate lower as we had towards the end of the day yesterday even. Um, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, but like you said, the market's open, man, and, and things have just not stopped to the downside for yeah. sure. Gold, bottom line is that uh, we're going to have, uh, well, we'll see uh, how we sh shake out by the time we come in Friday. But thus far, you're going to have rejection of lower price on the daily as, as well as the weekly. 1494.30 is the weekly number. 
1480, 4:30. Oh, okay. Way over that. Now. August 7th. Wow. Oh, that's interesting, man. Now that was that. It's been a. That's a nice. A that's a nice days, run too. I think we're at 1464, 1468. Yeah, 1465. Yeah, that's the low. It's not think, bad. Yeah, right. And that was basically right at 10 a.m. man. Yeah. It's all been 24 yeah. hours. It really is remarkable what you can do in 24 hours. It right? is. Notes and bonds, bottom line, folks, okay? They took out their B point yesterday. They had volume behind the move. Same thing, 24 and, hours, man. Yep. Oof. And this is saying that we're going right back to the highs. You know, you can see, look at that volume yesterday. 2.1 yeah. million contracts. You're going into 1.7 as well as 1.6. Sets up for a big day. I keep saying Friday, man. Non-farm payrolls. You had ADP missed slightly. ISM yep. was a big miss. Um, if, and, if payrolls ever miss, man, watch out on Friday. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And you have the, the they came out with the car numbers yesterday. The car numbers were shot. I mean, in Europe, they came out with the car numbers. And it's amazing how cars fluctuate so dramatically. Like, yeah. it, they were down like 14 to 17 percent. Yeah. Uh, big numbers. Yeah. You know, but guess what? It's They've a, been up monster numbers, too. You know what I mean? So yes. it's like they're allowed to keep that momentum going. They've had that momentum. Uh, it said that Saab. Okay. Yeah, I think it was Saab. That oh no, Subaru. Okay. So, okay. Subaru. Oh yeah, they're an anomaly, but go for it. Yeah. What is it? It's like 14 straight quarters. Yeah. Of, of, I, I'm this, picking numbers, but the, I've heard it before. And they, th this was the first quarter okay. that they had a retracement. It's something okay. like something. It's it's a it, huge amount of they, time. They really have. Right. Yeah. Huge amount of time. No they, have, they have the reliability of those vehicles. I've never owned one, man, but they they. The, the resale value, everything. I mean, yeah. they're reliable, they're good solid cars. cars, right? Last time I drove one was years ago, but I loved it. I had, when we were up in Alaska, okay. not when you were with me, but when I was up the office, I had to rent one once. Okay. And in the snow, it was one of those little, like, wagons, right? It was phenomenal. You're really going. Super Outback, maybe? That was one of those first that really caught maybe wind. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was, it was just a great no, car. Yeah, yeah. You know? yep. Some of the high-volume equities out here, you get Apple. Now, Apple, this is kind of interesting. This is a, this is a really bearish setup, man. Um, Apple got to a nice high yesterday. Yeah. Did a nice shooting star. Sure. And then gave it up in spades today. No, oh, those tech stocks, man. You know? App, Apple, Nasdaq getting smacked this, yeah. this morning so far for sure. And I saw. Um, could we go into the news for them? Yes. Because I saw. Apple. Yeah. Um, they're gonna loosen the reins. I think. Yeah. That's. I saw the headline here. And it's kind of interesting how this will play in. So, they're dealing with woes from maybe the FTC, right, of all okay. this stuff. So they're going to ease some restrictions on developers of third-party apps responding to a Bloomberg news story about the rise of in-house software that gets prized default status on iPhones and iPads. That sounds like something that the regulators would be coming after right. for. So maybe that's a preemptive kind of right. strike so that when, if they do show up in front of the regulators and they say, hey, you're giving yourself all this prime real estate, you know, you're, you're discouraging competition. That's right. Uh, you can see the setup already, but I wonder how that's going to play into, you know, as they try and push people into their own map services, to their own messaging service, oh, et cetera. Yeah. Now they might allow other apps to, to rise a bit. Yeah, we're going to see some changes in I guess all the big dogs, it's, it, somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's say, I'll pull up, uh, I'm going to show you. So iOS 13 just uh, came about, and man, they've been giving me notifications now of apps that are tracking my location when I'm not even using it. Yeah. I'm going to pull up, because I took a screenshot of this Facebook app, man. They had 55 times they had my location over three days when I wasn't even using the app. And you can see exactly where I was. So basically every hour of every day. It's scary stuff, man. But you can see I really liked that I had an Apple phone because at least they were telling me it was a new iOS deal. Really? It was remarkable, man. It's a heads up. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 296. Nasdaq's off 86. S&Ps are off 30. And uh, well, first, got to go over to Tommy's phone, because when you see this, folks... Big brother, all man. You, all you folks uh, on Facebook out here, uh, bottom line, e even when you're not on Facebook, they are on you. Man, right? So, wait till you see this. Tommy just so, sent an email to himself. Yeah, this is a so screenshot of this. my phone, right? right? So, this is what popped up randomly on my phone. It says, Facebook has used your location 55 times in the background over the past three days. Do you want to continue to allow background location use? Um, no. That was right. my answer, right. of course. And it's remarkable, man, in terms of there's Tampa where I live. Here's our beautiful office in St. Pete, yeah. right? My girlfriend's living out in a little bit further <laughs> east, all right? It's unbelievable. Three man. days. That's once an hour, right. okay, that it was tracking me over the weekend, and I didn't even know it. And I am somebody that is actually, I like, I, I would say aware. I thought I was hyper aware of my settings. Obviously not, okay? Right. Now, I've gotten other alerts like this have to do with other apps as well. Facebook, by far the most egregious in terms of what they had. This is a new feature, I think, within iOS, the iOS 13, okay. that's now pushing this stuff to the users, making sure they're aware, hey, this app is tracking you. Do you, you know, kind of kind of so, continually asking you to confirm right. those types of settings, which it never had done before. Um, and I was just so shocked. So when you say man. the iOS, right, you, yes. you, you've had your phone for a while, but then you, you could update to a, a different It's system. a new software. And they just... You, they upgrade it like once a year okay, or so. Cool. That's when when they just came <laughs> out on that big um, Apple event they had, right? right. They, they have a new iOS. It's iOS 13. Uh, it just came out. I updated the software. I've been getting more of these. It's asking over and over, do you want to allow it to access your Bluetooth? Yeah. Do you want to allow it to access your location? And you know what's wild? I couldn't believe that we, it, We man. know that they can do that, but seeing it yeah, exactly. in blue dots is like a different ball game. Exactly. It really was. I did not like that at all. Now I, I of course, hit that change to only while uh, while allow while change to only while using. You use a lot of gas in the last three days. <laughs> that's it's remarkable, man. And what's remarkable is that it was just that's not even when I'm using it. And I don't know how that that played out, man. But I was not happy and. Uh, 
you know, Facebook, man, that was just, they, they, the most, most egregious, I will call them. Yeah. Um, so be aware of those settings, man. Pretty remarkable though. And props to Apple because I like that, yeah. man. Oh yeah. Um, totally. that's, you know, we always talk about Apple, Google, Android, that seems like a bonus. And that's something I really appreciated them right. telling me, you know, oil, so, oil, it's got oil. That's right, man. Wednesday, we get our oil numbers at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Let's dig down this contract. Man, we've seen some volatility all over the place, oil oh, being yeah. one of them. So I'm going to jump down here and jump into our commodity spread, see where we're trading. We're going to pull up. Uh, all right, you know what? I think we're going to have to <coughs> refresh me. this. So let's, let's start over because this, this is not showing my 11 a.m.s. It's not showing my noons. I'm going to pull this up for two seconds. Make sure I move too quick. Yeah, make sure I pull off all my information before I throw it up there on the screen. Okay, we'll pull it back and let's see where we go. So I'm going to get in here, pull up our commodity spreads, jump into crude. Here's our 11 a.m. So what's going on is I'm not sure. I don't see a noon. Oh, there's our noons. Okay, so we have the contract trading of 53.50 on the dot right now. Okay, we'll pull this up. We're looking at the November oil contract. And again, it's about 1021 right now. We're looking at 53.50, man, the volatility in oil along everything. We just dropped more than a dollar from where we were at 3 a.m., let alone 8 a.m. this morning, 54.13. You trade down a full dollar, almost, to 9.45. Now, 53.50 doesn't line up with where we are on the 11s. We'd have 53.25. You know, not a bad trade if you just wanted to go bullish, man, into this news for a quick pop, as in, the market's at 53.50. You're getting into 53.57, so you're paying seven ticks over, and for that premium, you're only risking 32 bucks down to 53.25 as you come into inventory numbers. Right. Not a bad bullish trade if that's where you want to be. Noon contracts, same exact price spread, so not exactly a great volatility setup, as in would want 53.50 to have some exposure, but let's just look at the difference in premium. If you want to go bullish from 11 a.m., you were paying 53.58, for the noons, you're only paying 53.62, man. It seems like a great trade. When the market's at 53.50, you got yeah. exposure till noon, and you're basically paying 11 cents over the current market. Right. But for that premium, you're, you're capping your losses at 53.25. And as we know, this market moves, man. You could be under 53.25. You're only paying four pennies for the difference there. Which is yes, for that well. extra hour from yeah. 11 till noon. Yeah. Right. And um, it's, it's, you get a bad number on this inventory, and crude oil could be below 53.25 before your stop could even get hit, right. which is pretty cool that you're capped right. out of those losses. And let's just see where the dailies line up. $54 would be our price point for the first daily. So again, that's same and 54 are basically the same. So because of the movement we've gotten, we don't have a price point with a spread right at 53.50. Um, you'd have 53.25 or you'd have $54 to gain exposure, but not a lot of premium priced in, even looking at this one right here. Yeah, so let's see, CLX. <coughs> Excuse me. CLX9. November contract, baby. Yep. And... I mean, look at that, right? Even Monday, we're up at 56 yeah. bucks. I'm going to go for downtown. Downtown. All right, let's go into the whisper number. Look Can't at that we before? sticking out. Oh, I see what's happening, though. No. Okay. Not to cut it off. I want to see how much time yeah. we had on this before. Uh, we got 51 seconds. Perfect. Okay. So the survey number is looking for a decline of about 2 million barrels. Whisper number looks like a little bit higher than that. But if you're looking for lower prices, there should be more oil, right. ideally, right. than the market. So... What are you what are, what are you thinking? You got whisper a number numbers, in mind? Survey numbers two two million. Whisper numbers are one point five to the downside. Two point four to the downside. Uh, that's going to pop. No, right. oh no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, this is no. You would you'd want to have more oil. That's so right. less of a decline. Ooh, right. One fifty. It's going to be less than that. I don't think so. No. Well, it might drop no matter what. Put it one twenty five. Okay. One two five zero. Yeah. Whoops. We need a we need a minus in there. Yeah. How about eight seconds to spare? Boom, we're in there. Okay, Minus 1.25 million barrels. So now, let me, I gotta look at this again because you know what's going on is that this is actually coming into. Did the, we just choose distillates? I hope, hope we chose cruise. I think we chose this cruise. This is coming into the strength. Look at this. See, that's what I was doing here. Yeah. So, see that you had some strength here. Let's see, that, oh, it's below that bar, which is good. That's okay, yesterday that, at about that, 2 o'clock. That bar is 9,500 contracts. That bar is 23,000, but that's 5,352. Oh, we're right at it. So, so what happened here, folks, is that this came into strength, and it has light volume, but I'm still, I'm, I'll go for this bottom. It's, it's going to be a close call, because that's a normal, you have strength, you come back, you test it, do you know what I mean? And yeah. So, we'll Can see. we go back into that whisper, W-H-I-S again? Yeah. I just wanted to see. 
if we had pegged the crude. I think we pegged crude, but they have all of them in here. No, you know what? We chose distillates there. All right, that was our distillate oh. guess. All right, so we, we, I thought crude number, but that's perfect. We'll see where we come in. Crude number, they were looking for $2 million to the rise um, to the upside. Okay. So we'll get the numbers at 1030. We'll see where we shake out. And let's just see where we are at as... Um, 5343. So we've ticked down a bit. I mean, these trades, they, they set up even nicer as you come back there if you're really looking for a pop, man. Now you're talking about 33 bucks. You're getting in the 5358. Price tag is 5344 for the noon. If you're really looking for just a real quick pop in terms of the 11 AMs, not a bad bullish trade, man, at all. The bearish ones don't line up as much because, you know, you're capped out with your losses at 54, which right. is a lot of exposure. But, man, it's nice if you just want to go directionally where you're capped out at 53.25. I mean, not bad, man. Not bad yeah. at all for a market that just uh, crude oil, let alone everything else, man. Defined risk, right? What do we say to our man Kevin Hinks when he comes who, on? Who would ever think you get the Saudi oil fields attacked and you're at a lower price than we were with the day they got And you have economic slowdowns, right? right? I mean, right. everything, right? Dow, Dow down 350, NASDAQ off 99, S&P's off 36. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, crude inventories rose 3.1 million barrels. Gasoline fell 228,000. I think we're looking for about a rise in crude of 2 million barrels or so. That's what I said. Yeah, so right. let's jump back to the market. 
And, uh, uh-oh, before we, Crude Bulls didn't like the 3.1. Yeah, I would say so. Man. And we're off to the races to well, the downside. $53.07. And this is exactly what I was talking about. If you were going bullish, man, you don't have a chance to get out of 53.25, right? Right. You just jumped to 53.04. The great thing would have been no matter what in those contracts we were looking at, you're capped out at losses at 53.25. Right. You can do the same, you know, we're just looking at it on the NADX platform. You can do that type of stuff if you want to in, in options, I'm sure, um, but to find risk in this But not time. in futures. No, right. Because right. you can have that, that, that's too fast to market. I agree. You know I, mean? I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened, just to get it clarified, folks, what ended up happening, you could have your stop at that 53.25, that what you want, but yeah. it will blow by the stop and then you get the next trade. Exactly. You know, it doesn't have to, no, but that's right. how it works. Right. No, you know exactly. I mean? And that's what I was trying to write. Right. It's not going to trade at 53.25 exactly. because they're going to get the inventory number right. and the entire market's going to dry up for a split second and then it's going to come back in yeah. at the prices that they price it at and that for this And you instant. know, you may, can you just do the top of that? This might, may be an ABC structure on the way down. Now, I'd have to wait for a few minutes to get the uh, volumes on this. I just put it on yeah. just so I could by the second, yeah. all right? And you can see that we were trading at 53.52, and one, two, three, four, by 20 seconds in, we're at 53.05. All yeah. right, so just remarkable. And what'd you say, I'm sorry, would you? If you just put it back to, yeah, so the A to B on this, because this could be an ABC down intraday, so you take the top of, yeah, right, right there. there, yeah. So 54.13. Okay. Down to 53.19, just shy one. of a dollar. Just right. shy of a dollar. And the C, so 53.55. So 52.55. Yeah, 52.55, maybe 52.60, because yeah. it's about 95 That's cents. That's day. And look at it, it's not stopping, man. 52.90 yeah. as we accelerate and jumping back. So there is it. Distillates, a bigger number, minus 2.4. Estimate was two. Gasoline, a miss as well. They were down 228. Their estimate was for a rise. Crude, much bigger than they thought. Three million versus the two. And uh, I wonder how this is all going to play in in terms of refinery utilization. Big miss there, minus 3.4. The estimate was only, only minus 0.5. And uh, lower, hey, lower prices, man. Don't you worry about those Saudi oil fields, man. They're going to be just fine. Yeah. We're pumping out all the oil they need. And uh, lower, lower prices, under $53, man. Remarkable. If and you tie it back, I mean, what are we? Ten days? Are we? How? How? Where are we from that spike in crude? Are we ten? Ten? Look what it did to the market, man. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's, it's, it's CLX9. I believe it was Saturday to Sunday. It was approximately ten days ago. Yeah. Oh, CLX9. CLX9. Yeah. So when is that? September 16th. What do we got? Three. Six, nine, twelve, thirteen trading 13 days. days, and you know that high is a little bit unfair in that we were at sixty-three eighty-nine for a split second when right. the futures open Sunday night. Right. But even if you just take a where we close there, sixty-two sixty-seven, this is delayed quote. Yeah. We're now ten dollars under that number, and if you just back it up to the Friday before the attack on the oil fields, we were hovering between about fifty-four thirty and fifty-five. 60, and uh, we're now going to be almost $2 um, below, below that number. Man. Let's get over and take a look at those uh, e mini since uh, they decided to go south, as did the uh, rest of the indices here. Yep, and you got some juice behind it. That's, no all doubt. these numbers, man, they're all looking a little weak in terms of numbers. Every single thing that's come at us this week ISM, ADP. Yep. We'll go over some of those Ford numbers that we just went over earlier, man. They're not. Well, yeah. It's bad numbers, man. Yeah, let's pull it up right yeah. now because, you know, it's interesting, even with, with the oil, is that with, they're selling a lot less cars. You know, we have plenty of cars on the road, though. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And That's it's, a big number, though. It's, it's, so you got a few different things, just headlines. Yeah. We'll jump in. Van sales hit an all-time third quarter record, but van sales, I'm not sure if they're going to live or die off their van sales. Yeah. Um, U.S. light vehicle sales beat estimates, but guess what, man? They're explorers, and they're not making sedans anymore. They better be pl pushing out. Explorers, because that's what they're about. The new model launch caused Ford Motor Company's Explorer sales to crater in the third quarter, plummeting 48%. So dealers, I guess, were short on Explorer inventory this summer and demanding more of the high-profit SUV, but the situation is improving. The Ford factories in Chicago start getting up to speed. We've got adequate inventory in our stores. 
Lenev said, and who is this uh, U.S. sales chief? Yeah, um, yeah of course. That's, well, you know, you got to put some context. You're going to hope that people still have confidence in the fourth quarter to go buy or what forty thousand dollar Explorer, or maybe more I'm money. I'm sure right? even more, right? Yeah. I mean, that's um, and you know, as Ford largely exits cars, I mean, remarkable to even say that, right? The company is souping up its SUVs to give drivers a more sporty ride in their big rigs. So far, that strategy is paying off. Sales of the ST version of the Edge and Explorer SUVs rose twenty six percent in the third quarter, but they're dealing with some woes, man. And I guess, uh, you know, that's a big number when you just see Explorer sales because everybody knows the Ford Explorer. Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was the one. And, you, and uh, Ford down today on that news, on their numbers. Yeah. Yeah. These, these car companies, uh, let's see, no doubt have, uh, they're contracting, you know. The amount of cars that they sell still is a total mind blower. It though. sure is. It really it is. It sure it's is, man. Like, we love our automobiles. Yeah, there's just no doubt about that. And that may change, though. We were talking about it at the break, yeah. man. When you add up all the costs, oh. you add up your payment, you add up your insurance, it's you scary. add up um, just regular service, right. you add up the gas that you pay. Uh, it is a lot of money every single day yep. that now there is. There didn't used to be an alternative. There right? is. Now there is. So when we take a look at the. Um, Plus, in the minus inside the Dow Industrials, folks, you got Boeing uh, putting minus 57, Apple 31, um, Visa 31, Home Depot uh, 27, all the negative. Yeah. Positive, you get J&J. &J. Now, check this out, folks. J&J, &J, I'm telling you, man. What do they got cooking? Oh, they got some good lawyers, man. So, what this is about, right? So, check this out. J&J &J just did a, um, uh, a settlement in Ohio. Probably right at the top one. And it is chump change. Uh, so, where do you see this? 20.4 million. 20.4 million. Now, listen to this. This is what's really cool. Well, it's not cool for Ohio. Whoever they are on their side has no, you know, it's, it, they just screwed it up. Uh, the bottom line is that, so they, 20.4 million to settle with two Ohio counties suggest opiate liability is manageable, okay? That's going to be one story from an analyst, right? Let me yes. sign this other one, though. So, guess what? They, they had already got... A, they lost the case in Oklahoma, and it's 20. It's like 400 or 500 million. I think that's one we were just on, maybe. I know. I got. Yeah. I read this last maybe night. Maybe just page it. Well, if you and, read it last night, it might yeah. be this. No. Let's try that. No, go ahead. Where you? Yeah, that it's uh, anyway, folks. Okay, that's what the thing is. Is that you got to be kidding me, man? They they lost this. They, they, this, this is probably going to be it. 572 million. There yeah, it is. So it's the first time the J and J has agreed to a, a payout on claims that downplay the risks of the opioid painkillers. Right. It refused to settle the state of Oklahoma's allegations that illegally marketed, and a judge ordered it to pay 572. <laughs> so the settlement right. allows the company to avoid the resource demands and uncertainty of a trial as it continues to seek meaningful progress. Um, and that's J and J official of course, saying that. Yeah, I mean, no. these things are and all so over that, the place. And so that's, that's an appeal now, but the bottom yes. line is that, you know, 20 million versus 572. Yeah, um, it's a tough deal, man. Seems like wild. chump change compared to the damage that they've done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no doubt. 877-927-6648. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestack, coming up. We are going to be talking currencies, and they are moving. Dow, Dow down 438. NASDAQ off 119. S&P's off 45. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 466. We get the NASDAQ off 122. S&Ps are off 46. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, I can't believe it's a week later already, man. Holy cow, yeah, man. These are going quick. <laughs> How about it? How about it? We got some interesting things with the uh, Dixie on its highs, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Talk to us, man. All right. Well, why don't we start out with your favorite currency, the uh, Japanese yen. Good. Perfect. So, uh, dollar index is strong, but it doesn't seem to be uh, impacting the, uh, the yen. The yen seems to be a little bit stronger. So we had a uh, rejection of uh, two weeks ago. We set a higher move high in the uh, U.S. dollar yen trade. And since then, it's been under pressure a little bit. And then we had a uh, spike high yesterday, failed to make a higher move high. And now it reversed gears. And today we're, um, we're all off. Or if you pull up the chart right now, you can see that um, the market is going lower right now. Yes. No, I, I can, you know, that half of, you know, 44 ticks. Yeah, look at that, man. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't get back in that range, man. I mean, and that was from, uh, well, that big down day. What was that? That was... August 1st, right? That's when we went from that 109 to 107, right? Right. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing for uh, your listeners. Uh, yesterday was October 1st. We have the beginning of a month. A yes. lot of times you have moves that are initiated at the beginning of the month. We had multiple markets that spiked against the dollar or with the dollar, you know, what have you, yesterday. And the dollar index started off very strong today. It was very interesting because it started to go against those um, pivot points from yesterday, initially this morning. Yes. Okay. So dollar index was higher um, all night, and especially before the U.S. stock market opened. The pound was lower. The euro was lower. The yen, however, this the U.S. dollar yen was lower. So that was not going the way of the dollar index whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have another interesting thing. The U.S. dollar Swiss, that had a similar sell signal yesterday. They crossed parity. Okay, for the second time re as, as of late, but then they rejected it and it looked like it was a failure. And then like a balloon underwater, 
the, the Swiss of all the currencies shows dollar strength and in a very, very big way. So I think that we might be coming to one of those inflection points again, you know, and especially since we're at the beginning of the month. Okay. Where the US dollar yen, this little sell signal that's going on from yesterday and is following through today, maybe setting the trend for a while, especially because member of the Fed, they cut rates again, you know, just uh, recently, where I thought they were going to hold off another month. And then they also came up with the follow through that they're, they, they're likely to pull some more bullets out of their pocket. Right. So the bear, the US um, dollar yen bear, I think it's back, even though we have trade talks coming up next week. Yeah, no, uh, you know, it's so intriguing to me that the, I mean, gold got smoked last week, but it came right back. And, you know, when, when you're looking at the gold market, I mean, it's amazing we're still at 1,500 and the dollar's at highs. So it's like, right. okay, right. you know, if, exactly. if the dollar gives it up at all, you know, you're, you're really going to get some action here. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, but each and every time that it seems to come off a high, you just we haven't got any follow through on the way down yet. You know what I mean? Right. So. Now, here's the other interesting thing. Like I said, the dollar index today showed all the strength overnight yes. and then coming to our market opening. All of a sudden, it's falling back a little bit. I think that this signal, this might be a good inflection point because yesterday the euro spiked low. Now, that market's been trending lower <clears throat> for the past month and a half. Okay? Right. Pressing that lower boundary of support. And it's usually when it gets to this 108 half to 109 half area, that's where the, no matter what's going on, the euro seems to find a base and gets another like rally. I don't yes. know why, it just seems to be it. Right. So yesterday we had a piercing line formation, another um, Japanese candlestick signal, you know, and it, initially the euro US dollar was lower today. It looked like that signal might fail like it did in the Swiss, but it didn't. Now it's higher. And then the pound also did the same thing. It spiked low yesterday. It was and I think it's slightly lower right now, but it's at the upper part of its range. And it's actually, if you look at it, yeah, it, it looks. Wait, they, I can see it. It rejected that uh, one two two seven. Right, you're at one right. two three zero three right now. Yeah. Right. And remember, I mentioned the U.S. dollar Swiss. I looked at the Swiss versus all the other major currency crosses um, last night. The Swiss was totally strong. So all of a sudden this morning, we get this snap back, like it's like a knee jerk. I think that you might see the US dollar Swiss turn around in reverse gears. And if it does, then I think you'll see a sell off in the dollar index for at least like a week or so as we head into the trade talks. Yeah, man, there's, there's so much different movement. I was, <laughs> I was listening to uh, Bloomberg and one person was bringing up the chart and then the other person was saying, well, I think it's pretty easy, you know, and it was a fundamentalist, but when they said it, it was just amazing. And what it was is that they said, well, if you go back to like 2000, the, and trade in the US dollar was like $1 trillion, all trade around the world, right? Mm -hmm. If you come to today, I forget what the number was, but it's like five to seven trillion or nine trillion. Right. I mean, yeah. I it, think you told me it was 16, but whatever it, it, it was. It, it was outrageous. Man, yeah. I mean, it was like, and, and, and you I know. Said, wasn't everybody using the dollar in 2000, yeah. what, what, right? I mean, no, that's, totally. yeah, of course and they so, were. And yeah. so, you know, it was like, when you're looking at that aspect, I, I was like saying, well, is there only gonna be the dollar left? I mean, if that's what all trade is, and she wasn't just talking about the United States, she was talking about two foreign countries outside of the United States still trading in US dollars. Sure. You know, which you can see why it's gonna make sense. You start trading, you know, and all these other currencies, man, you better have it hedged out in a yeah. big way, right? Well, ultimately, everybody wants U.S. dollars, even if they're using other currencies, for, even in multiple currencies, eventually they want to somehow cash out into dollars because it's always the most stable currency. Right, right. right. Hey, you know, let me ask you something. When, before the euro came in, I know you, would, you were still trading currencies then, that must have mm -hmm. been really wild, right? That there was all oh, these sure. different currencies, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, the DMARC. Well, that was when the DMARC was a really big deal. I you see. Know? Okay. So I remember, I remember at, at, when I was on the trading floor at the Merck that the currencies, when they still were flying in the futures pits back in the early 90s, the currencies were crazy. I mean, they were right. absolutely nuts. And the DMARC pit, the DMARC pit, and the yen pit, those were the two biggest pits there. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The DMARC was that was the that was the big. I mean, the pound had huge volume, but it, it wasn't the most actively traded contract, you know, except right. for when it was really busy. But on any given day, the DMARC, that thing was crazy. And that was before you had an EU. That was when it was just Germany. Sure, you know? right, so right. We, and, that also reminds me, uh, we have tomorrow retail sales coming out for the EU, and uh, that's a big deal because they just downgraded all their forecasts for GDP and all these things for the next year for the EU. So if they get a nice positive spike, 
for retail sales, which would obviously be coming out unexpected, then that would help to fuel this little bounce in the euro US dollar that might be starting to form right now. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you can see the, the S&P, I mean, the indices are getting smoked out here today. And it's really sure. going to be interesting to see, okay, what does that do to the currencies, if anything? Do you know what Seriously, I'm saying? Man. You know. Right. Uh, right. You have those trade talks coming out tomorrow. And remember, Boris Johnson was speaking, and there's a whole nonsense now with Brexit going on. So we have this timeline. We're, we're, we're three weeks away from Brexit deadline. We're three weeks away because next week is the trade talks, and we know next month there's a bunch of deadlines for that, too. So we'll see if they manifest. So never-ending cycle of news right now, man. Amazing. Yeah. Listen, folks, every trading day, you can go over to forex-trading-unlock.com. Check out Teddy, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great Thanks. week. Safe week, man. We look forward to speaking you next too. week. Thanks so See much, Teddy. Week. Thank Take you. Care, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Dow's down 465. NASDAQ is off 128. S&Ps are off 27. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow, Dow is down 455. Nasdaq is down 124. S&Ps are up 46. And those notes and bonds, folks, they're in a confirmed ABC structure up, but they, they're catching a big bid now. You get the 10-year up 14 ticks, the 30-year up 24 ticks, and you can see this uh, yield. I said, I said, maybe we're at a 1.59 handle yep. with that kind of move. We sure are, man, just since we've been on the air. I mean, look at that drop. 
All right. It's just this is not normally what happens, man. From 1.63 to 1.59, you back things up yesterday at 10 a.m., even 8.30, we're sitting at 1.75. So you drop from 1.75 to 1.59 in about 24 hours. And then watch this Go inside the 10-year. The 10-year, folks, could be a very large, the yield, uh, ABC structure on the way down. And it's going to be really wild if it is. Uh, well, actually, we got a small one. What's the small one? The small one's going to bring us down here. The small one would be, what, 1.9, 1 1.7 about. No, that was 1.62, I believe. Oh, 1.62. Oh, my God. Okay. So that's like 0.28 off, so call it one. But that'd be like 1.47. Okay. It would bring it to. Then 1.42 is the low. So we're going after, we're going after the low. Yeah, you know, no matter what, one that's, low, that's not the low. The low is 1.31 or something. But sure, the uh, all-time low you're talking the, the about. The bottom but line is that is an important that, low from the end it, of August. It certainly is. Yeah. And when you bring this on a big, <laughs> bigger aspect, yeah. it's like, man, that was like not even a bounce. No, no. <laughs> you know, no. You put it on a monthly, not even close. Yeah. And you know, you you have the TLT. The TLT is uh, in an ABC structure on the way up. And what's interesting, you know, I, at the news update, you did the Lennar. Lennar came out with yeah. numbers. Lennar is an numbers. ABC up too, folks. We don't have it. I, I, I was looking when he had, when Tommy had done it. Lennar's taking out his B point, taking out with volume. So we'll jump around the VIX 2086. We'll take a look at Lennar right now. Oh, it's pared back a bit. So 1.38% yeah. and finishing up with oil, 52.76, the price accrued. Quite a move. Stay right there, folks. We've got the fast market coming up next. And we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Dave, wait. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Real! Go get him, folks.